So apparently somebody is being a little bit malicious with the NPM packages. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed that this would ever happen? Everything blocks devs from removing their own NPM packages, which is also hilarious because sometimes the only way to make JavaScript behave correctly is deleting your NPM node modules folder. So this is great. I'm loving where this is going. I'm super excited. Some coding guy, I'm sure you never saw this. Over the holidays, the NPM package registry was flooded with more than 3,000 packages, including one called Everything and others named a variation of the word. Okay, okay. The package is quite aptly named as downloading everything will gradually pull in every single NPM package that has ever been published to the npmjs.com registry onto your computer, potentially making it run out of storage. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Guy, is this going to be an inode busting problem? Are we about to see that? Remember when you, you told me about that? You're the one that uh, I first heard that term from. I did say that, yeah, 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 yeah. If you're asking, but who would install everything that ignores a bigger side effect of the package? <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> First off, who would install everything? I don't know, because it's funny. Since there's 3,000 plus packages manages to include every single NPM package on NPM. Dude, is there everything GitHub, everything JS? I want to just see everything JS. What is this? Hi Dash? I don't get this. I, it's, someone find me a link. I would love to see. Dude, what is going on with my internet? Look at that downloading. Oh, it's dead. Come on. No. No! Cookies got milked. All right, since 3,000 packages managed to include every single NPM package on npmjs.com registry as their dependency, NPM package authors who have ever published to NPM registry would now be unable to remove their packages at will because of NPM's policy. Oh, that's so good! NPM doesn't allow you to remove something if it's being relied on! Oh, let's go! Everything prevents you from unpublishing your packages. What may have started as a simple prank ended up having bigger repercussions for all authors across the NPM ecosystem. Installing everything could have just caused your computer to potentially fall short of storage space and slow down, but the package's mere existence on NPMJS prevents authors unrelated to this package whatsoever from unpublishing their packages from the world's largest JavaScript toilet. And everything package has just five sub packages published under the everything registry scope listed in its dependencies. Bleeping computer has observed. Nice. These five packages, however, gradually managed to pull in every single package present on the entire registry as a dependency. For example, everything pulls in everything uh, registry chunk two, which may further attempt to pull in several other packages by the same author, such as everything sub chunk 162.23. Amazing. NPM has some sort of way to be able to crawl and search all packages. So they probably literally just got every package name possible from NPM, threw that into a package.json, learned you couldn't put them all in package.json's, then created a bunch of sub-projects and just divvied them out, some sort of alphabetical, and then eventually just rolled it all up into one single one and called it a day. What a genius idea. I love this guy. Whoever you are, everything, registry, you're beautiful. Each of the sub-packages, or chunks as the author calls them, ultimately included about 800 NPM projects as their dependency. Considering the author of everything has published 3,000 plus packages, chunks, each with hundreds of dependencies, a single NPM install everything command would start resolving what's referred to as transitive dependencies and end up downloading millions of packages. GDI2290, aka Patrick JS. Let's go, Patrick! Me and that guy used to, uh, I, I hung out with that guy at conferences, who is behind the prank, apologized, Let's go, Patrick! Oh, Patrick, let's go, Patrick! Oh, let's go, Patrick! I didn't know you did this! Oh, Patrick, what a gem! I love what you did. Yeah, let's go, Patrick. Let's go, Patrick. Let's go, Patrick. I cannot believe you did that. You hot dog. That is so good. We'll, we'll have to get him on. Should we get him on to do like a little 10 minute? How did he accomplish it? What, what, what was the thing? I would love to just hear his like, his explanation because it just is so dang funny. Heck yes, yeah, yeah. I'll send him a message. We'll get him on. That is so dang funny. Funny. A preserved snapshot uh, of the now removed GitHub discussion is provided. Unpublishing packages. Hey, first off, I want to apologize about any difficulties this package has caused. We are working to resolve the issues and we have contacted NPM regarding support with this matter. That's so 
dang funny. I just absolutely am so happy this existed. Imagine you did an experiment, published a package to NPM, and now you want to remove your NPM package. You can't do it if other packages are using it, writes Joseph Harush, head of software supply chain security at Checkmarks. Uh-oh, Marxism mentioned on the company's blog. Harush, who labeled this campaign Dependency Hell, further states, the problem is, since everything relies on every package, including yours, your package gets stuck, and there's some unknown package preventing you from removing it. Can I throw out a side? Can I just throw out something else? If you publish your code to the trash fire known as NPM, who are all these people that are like, I better remove all my code? Like, I, I, I'm, this whole problem doesn't seem like it's real to begin with. TLDR on why NPM is a trash fire. <laughs> One thing is I really dislike uh, a single point of failure dependency systems, right? I think Git is a significantly better version of dependency. I think Dino got it right. I think Go got it right when they did that. I don't like the idea of having companies that manage dependencies. There's something about that that is just naughty, and it's also going to end up... There's just problems, right? There's just simply problems that exist when one person or one company owns it. But nobody uses Git decentralized. That's fine. I'm not saying you have to use Git decentralized. What I mean is that you can have a package on GitLab as much as you can have it on Stash in your private company, a private repo at your company. You can have it as much as you want on some other place. Cargo allows that, but Cargo also has a named registry. And there's some problems with the named registry, as we've seen before. The Cargo Foundation has reasons in which they will remove your package. And, you know, there's just something weird about that. I don't know. It's just weird. And they said it's only for specific reasons, but then they started getting into all these weird arguments and who and why should something be removed and what happened if they, just, they you know, they now determine you're a bad actor and start removing your packages. I don't know. There's just some weird feeling I have about, about these things. New Rust Rama, no, that was from a little bit ago where they were, they, they had some weird package removing issues. But my general take is I just like the idea of having not a company run your packages. What is this? Can what is this? What is Hex? Is 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 Hex the Hex Haskell thing? I can't remember. What, what just give me the TLDR. I can't be looking at all that, Ryan. Oh, it's Elixir. Elixir's Hex. That's right. That's right. That's right. I like what Go did. I think Go is better. I think Dino did a good job with that. It should be immutable. When you publish a package publicly, it should just simply be immutable. Go does not have a centralized package authority. No, I think it's good. I think that was. A, I think that's a good move. That means you use GitLab, Bitbucket, Stash, GitHub, a private Git server at your company. You just use that. I think it's. I, I honestly think it's better. Anyways, researchers drew comparison between everything and no one left behind package published in January 2023 that attempted to pull off much the same stunt. NPN policy shift follows left pad incident. Unlike other open source software registries like Maven Central, which are immutable and generally prevent authors from removing their published components npm and pypy have tradition i love the i love pypy pypy did you see that github issue with pypy did you see that did you see that get hold on but i love this i love this look at this uploading test pypy hits at says hey here's an issue i'm having follows up were you able to resolve it because it got closed and then the author's like no i decided i don't care <laughs> Love it! That energy is just so glorious! Dude, it's so good. It's so good. Oh my goodness, everything is its just beautiful. Okay, let's see what happened. It has traditionally allowed developers to delete or yank their releases at will. Following the 2016 incident that entailed LeftPad's author removing his NPM package in protest and breaking a large part of the internet, NPM made it more difficult for authors to unpublish packages. One such policy change allowing authors to unpublish packages only if no other packages on the NPM registry is dependent on it. Ironically, this policy also left Patrick JS, the author of everything, unable to easily remove his prank package given the extensively long dependency chain he has set up. Bleepy Computer uh, observed, as of this morning, while everything continues to live on the registry, the thousands of everything registry scoped packages used by it now have been made private, potentially re resolving the issue. Dude, that's so hilarious. I just love that this is a problem. Like, this is a problem. Yeah, put that on your resume. Befuddled and confused NPM. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I also think it's funny that after left pad, they realized it's a bad idea to allow people to mutate packages underneath people. Geez, really? You realize that you can also post non-incrementing packages, right? So I can post 1.1.5 1 .1 and then post 1.1.4. 1 .1 like I can post into the past, which means that you could non-maliciously post a package and then maliciously post post one behind it and then theoretically before this change you could delete that thus having people fall back onto a malicious 
package. It's why NPM's difficult. Uh, Song, what did you just say? I just saw what you said, Song. A song said, what, uh, thoughts on Shaw for package dependencies? Shaw's tag, like get tag slash whatever. I mean, it's all the same thing, right? I, it's some sort of unique way to identify stuff. The most based package manager is Elm. It can tell if you've made breaking changes and forces version of bumps. That's pretty cool. Are you drinking gin? Absolutely. Nothing like a good old fashioned gin and tonic in the morning. This just approves that ideas are fundamentally broken. All ideas are pretty much broken. I'm fine with the Shaw. I just don't, the reasons why I don't like Shaw's is that a Shaw doesn't tell me what I have. Have. Whereas a URL plus like say a get tag tells me what I have, right? That's just a named Sha. And so I like that. I like that better. Sha Malal Ma Ding Dong. Yeah, exactly. What happened to the Prime main channel? It's, it's things are happening. Uh, the drink of gin? Yeah, the drink of gin. You know it. Do Americans drink gin and tonics? Oh, I'm sure we do. I'm sure there's, Amer dude, there's an American for everything. The rule 34 of America is that whatever idea you have of someone doing, there's an American that is doing that. It's just what it is. The name. is the prime engine.